Looks like it's okay. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the algorithmic part of milestone three. And to recap what we talked about uh, last week, we talked about milestone three as a user interface. It's going to build on top of your milestone two one. And uh, it's also got an algorithm, which is an example of a shortest path algorithm, which is an important class of algorithms. They're used for a lot of different things, which we talked about last week. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't find my uh, pen, so I'm not going to be able to draw on the slides. This is one where it's really nice to be able to draw. Okay, so we're going to go through a few different algorithms. We're going to start with like uh, simple ones, and they're going to gradually get a little bit more complicated, um, but better. They're going to be more efficient. So we're going to start with one that is should be pretty familiar. Uh, it's an enhancement of what you used in EC244 to traverse a binary search tree. And the algorithm that you used to traverse a binary search tree, and you can also use in general graphs, is called depth first search. So I don't know if you knew that. Did you guys know that what you were using on the binary search tree is called depth first search? Okay, so it is called depth first search. Uh, and we can use that to find paths in, you used it to go through a binary search tree. We're now gonna try to use that algorithm to go through a graph. Okay, and remember a tree is a special case of a graph. Every tree is a graph, but not every graph is a tree. Okay, so depth first search is coded with recursion. So it should look pretty familiar. So I'm trying to go from, uh, whoops, from the source to the destination, this little graph. So what we're doing, our nodes are going to be intersections, our edges are going to be street segments. Uh, and so we've got some source intersections, some destination intersection. And we're trying to find a path between them. Remember, the way we're going to encode a path is we're going to actually list all the street segments. But before we can list them all, we, we need to find a path. OK, so we're going to need a little bit of storage. So hopefully you can see my cursor here. It's my poor man's uh, Surface Pen. Uh, if anyone has a Surface Pen, I'll borrow it, actually, and I'll, I'll be super appreciative. <laughs> so, uh, OK, so I'm going to need a little bit of storage. So I'm going to make a vector. And the, I'm going to make the type of my vector node. Node is just whatever I need to store for intersection. Okay, so I'm going to make a vector. Uh, and I've done that outside of my main pathfinding routine. Or maybe I could do it at the beginning of it. But basically, this data structure just exists because I'm going to make use of it sometimes. Okay, my main program, I'm just going to call find path. And I'm going to call it with two things the ID of the source intersection, so where I'm starting and the ID of the destination intersection, where I'm ending. Okay, and this algorithm, depth first search, is recursive. So the way the recursion is going to work is I got to write find path, and I need find path to work for essentially any intersection. So it's got a destination, and it's got a current intersection. Okay, that's going to be the recursion. I'm going to try to get closer to my destination and call find path again. Does it make sense? So kind of the way you the way you always do recursion. Okay, so how am I going to code that? So here, here's my recursive start. I just call find path source ID to dest ID. And now I need to think, well, okay, how do I actually code the recursion? All right, so I, and the way the recursion is going to work is it has to work for any current intersection. Where am I right now? Not the center of the source, just where I am right now. And I'm trying to go towards the destination. So what can I do to try to get closer to the destination? Uh, any ideas? It's going to be close to what you coded for your binary search tree traversal in EC244, because that was a special case of depth first search in a graph. This is maybe a difficult one, but somebody's got the guts, you can try it. Okay, so C07, I'm going to go to you, and it looks like. Let me turn on your microphone. So I'm going to stop you there for a second because that was a good point. So when you do recursion, one of the things we have to figure out is like, when do we end? So you're saying, okay. The end is if the current ID is the destination ID, well, then we found it, we should just return true, right? Okay, so I'm gonna actually hit 
There, just you got the first part of the function. You're doing extremely well, right? I, I, I wish Dr. Tallman or I had a prize for you because it's looking good. It's looking kind of like Price is Right. Um, so yeah, that, that's right. Okay, now you got to go through the other case. What if, that, what if the current ID was not the destination ID? What do you do next? Yeah, and so that's exactly right. Okay, so you know how to get to the adjacent intersections. So you you wrote a function called is directly connected in milestone one. That function is actually very helpful for figuring out where can I get to. You wrote functions like street segments of intersection and so on. So you know how to traverse the street segment, uh, a streets database API to find what am I connected to. So you could pre-calculate that and stick it in a data structure, or you could just walk through the streets database API functions that you've already used or some of your M1 functions. But that's exactly right. So I'm gonna say my node data structure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my current ID and I'm gonna look up in my nodes data structure that I just showed you. I'll call what I just looked up the current node. Uh, and I'm gonna go through its outgoing edges. Okay, so all the intersections or nodes that I can reach in one step from this intersection. So I could look that up in my nodes data structure if I properly loaded it. I could also just get it by using my M1 functions or the streets database functions. That's also fine. Those functions are pretty fast. So maybe I'll just directly use that. doesn't matter. What I'm showing you in this lecture is kind of halfway between C++ code and pseudo code. All right, so you, you can kind of interpret exactly how to do this as you will. Uh, so for every one of these outgoing edges, we can ask, well, where does it go? What, what intersection does that street segment lead to? Uh, and then we've, we've got another intersection that is connected to us by one edge or one street segment. Uh, so we're gonna call a find path on that new node or intersection, right? We can call it an intersection, call it a node. It's basically the same thing. Okay, so we call a find path again. So that's a recursion step. Um, okay, so let's go back to C, C07. Yeah, you have a question? That's a great point. Okay, so hold that thought because you've identified a problem with the code as I've written it. So this code is a little too close to what you wrote in EC244 to do a binary search tree. It is actually gonna have a problem. So hold that thought and I'm gonna come back to you. But before we do that, okay, what else should I do? So I'm looping through, I'm going through every single one of these edges. Okay, so I go through this edge. Well, let's say I go through, whoops. Let's go, I go through this edge, I find the node on the other end of it, and I'm gonna call find path with it. And this find path is gonna return either true or false. So if it returns true, I'm done. Okay, it means that from this node, there was a path. So I can, I can return true. Does that make sense? I'm done. If I, you already can, if you can read quickly, you already saw this. If I get all the way down here, oops. If I get all the way down here, uh, I've got a problem. Okay, it means I've, well, I've, I've had a, a dead end. Okay, I've gone through all of the nodes that I can reach from where I am right now. I've called find path on all of them. All of those find path calls have returned, they've all said false. So if I get all the way down here, uh, I've explored as far as I can from this current node and I didn't find a way to get to the destination, so I should return false. Okay, does that make sense? So similar to what you wrote for our binary search tree to traverse it. Uh, so let's just watch that execute. Okay, so I'm numbering the nodes here or again, I'm using node and intersection somewhat interchangeably because for our problem, they basically mean the same thing. So I start at the source, let's say it's node one, and I'm gonna check, is that the destination ID? And it isn't. So next I'm gonna go into this loop and I'm gonna say, go through all the edges that come out of this. So I'll go through the first edge right here. Uh, and I look at what 
intersection or node is on the other side of that. It's intersection two. That's not my destination ID either. So I'm gonna go through its outgoing edges and it's got an outgoing edge that goes here. Uh, so I'm gonna call find path on node three. That's not my destination. Okay, so I go through this if statement uh, and it doesn't actually have any outgoing edges. Node three has no outgoing edges. Uh, so I go right through this loop and I'm gonna return false. So I return false. So now I'm back up at this, uh, this node. And this node, I've only gone through the first edge. So I'm now gonna go through the second iteration of the loop. I'm gonna go to the second edge, find the node on the other side of that. Let's say it's node three. Um, it's not my destination. So I'm gonna go look at its edges and its edge goes to node four, which is my destination. So I finally return true. Okay, so I'll return true. And then as I, when I return true, every one of the calls that there's kind of a bunch of recursive calls on the stack, each of them will return true. So we return true all the way back to the calling routine and it says, yeah, we found a path. Okay. Is everybody with me? You go, yeah, we found the path. Good. Okay. So that looks good. But let's go back to, uh, I'm going to go back to your question in a second. So let's take a like slightly more complicated graph. And this looks a little bit more like a street map. Street maps have all sorts of edges connecting all sorts of intersections. My previous graph is a little too simple. Okay, so I started the source again. It's not my destination, so I'm gonna look at its outgoing edges. Say I look at this one first. That's not my destination, so I'm gonna look at its outgoing edges. Say I look at that one first, not my destination, look at its outgoing edges. I look at this one. And now I'm gonna look at its outgoing edges. Could look at this one, could look at that one. Let's say I look at this one first. Okay, it goes back there. When I go back to this edge or this node, I'm gonna look at its outgoing edges, which takes me back here. And then so, so on and so forth. I keep just ping-ponging around between those two. Okay, so I'm not getting anywhere. I actually have an infinite loop or infinite recursion. So this is actually gonna just hang. It's just gonna keep going around and around and around uh, this, what's called a cycle. So in a graph when you can go in a circle and go from one node through some other nodes and get back to the original node, that's called a cycle. So I've just gone in a circle and with the code I've written here, I'll go to circle forever. So this isn't, what, isn't gonna quite work. This kind of code works in a binary search tree because the tree has no cycles. You cannot go in a circle in a tree. But in a general graph, like a street map, there are all sorts of cycles. So we can go in circles all over the place. So we need to do something else. Uh, and C07, you actually already said what to do. So what, this is your chance to shine. Okay, so how are you gonna fix this? Right, so we're gonna to have to have a flag to say, have we ever come to this node before? to stop us from going in circles. Okay, so it's like you're wandering around in the forest and you're leaving markers to say, I've been here, I've been there. Uh, so you don't just go around in circles. Uh, okay, so we've got this infinite loop, we gotta get rid of it. So to fix it, we've got this node data structure uh, and we can put anything we want in it. So, so we've got one entry in this node uh, nodes vector for every single intersection or node. Um, and basically, I'm just going to add a new member to this uh, nodes data structure, OK? Uh, so I've defined a struct, I called it node, so I can just add as much data to each node as I want. So I'm adding a new field to it called visited. And visited is going to be initialized before I start this routine to false for everything. But when I get to a node, I'm going to say, uh, visited is true, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so now I'm marking when I get, the first time I get to a node in my search, I set its visited flag to true. What, what else do I have to do? Okay, that's not gonna be enough because I just set something but I'm not actually making any use of it. So I think B07 looks like you have an idea. What do you think you should do? Or do you have a question? 
Sorry, could you say that again? You can use an STL set. Yeah, you could use a set too. So I'm using essentially a vector and I've got one entry for every single node because I, I like vectors. I'll admit vector is my favorite data structure. We all have a favorite data structure, vector is mine. Um, you're saying, well, instead of doing that, you could use a set and just basically put in the set the node IDs that have been visited. And I guess the advantage of that is if you haven't visited very many nodes, the data structure is smaller. So yeah, you could do that. So if you don't want to use a vector, you don't have to use a vector. Um, I like vector for this because it's nice and fast. It's order one to set this element and it's order one to check it. It does mean the reset is a bit more time consuming because to reset this whole vector after I've done my, before I start my path search is order n. I have to go through every single element in it and reset them to false. Whereas a set, if there aren't that many things in it, resetting it will be faster. So yeah, there is a trade-off there. They're both reasonable choices. What am I gonna do now here? So I've, I've set this visited flag, but obviously that's not gonna be enough. I need to test it somehow. Where, what use should I make of it? Where should I put some more code? So I'm gonna to go to E10, uh, I think. Let me just click on this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, not very well, say it really loud. I think it might not, it might, might not be very strong. Okay, so you're saying, you're saying that we, we've got to check this before we do the recursion. The whole point of setting visited was don't recurse if it's already been visited. Is that right? Yeah, and that makes sense. So there's two pieces. I have to set visited to true when I get to a node, the first time I get to it. And then down here where I'm looking at, well, what can I reach? I'm gonna add, okay, so I'm at a certain node, current node. And I can reach with one street segment or one edge, another node called two node. Before I go recursing from that two node to see, can I get to the destination? I check, have I already visited it? Okay, so that's what, that's what we put in here. So if the visited flag is set for this two node ID, then we're, uh, we're not gonna go recurse. Okay, so if we make that little change, we start here at our, our source node, Okay, it's not our destination. We mark it as visited. So I colored it red to indicate that we've changed its visited flag to true. Okay, it wasn't our destination. So we're gonna come into this loop. We're gonna look at its outgoing edges. And the first one goes here. So we're gonna check if it was visited. Well, we're gonna check if it's our destination node and it isn't. We're gonna mark it as visited so it becomes red. And then we're gonna check the edges from it. We're gonna come into the, the loop again. Uh, and let's say we go to this edge first. We check, is that our destination? It's not. Okay, Merkin is visited. We're going to then go into the loop again. We're going to recurse again. We're going to say, okay, let's look at the outgoing edge. We find that node. It's not our destination. Let's mark it as visited. And we're back in this loop. So we look at this edge again. That's where we got into trouble before. But now when we look at this, we find that you know, we have an edge going here, but that node is already marked as visited. Okay, so we don't recurse on it, we just skip it. Whoops, so instead we're gonna go down to this node because we just skipped over that one. We look at that node, actually is the destination. So we return true and that true kind of gets returned all the way back through all the recursive calls until the first routine we made the initial call that we made returns true so it says yeah we got a path okay so it works this visited flag was enough that we don't go in circles anymore so our algorithm functions okay does it make sense does everybody understand how this algorithm works relatively small enhancement off of your binary search tree recursion the enhancements are we have to use this visited flag to watch for cycles for going in circles and the other enhancement is we can't say, you know, go down the left child, go down the right child. In a general graph, we don't know how many children we have. We don't even call them children. We just call them outgoing edges, and we have to go through all of them. Okay, so we have to ask how many edges, and we're going to go through them all. But otherwise, it's very similar to what you wrote in 244.
How many people in 244, did you get the graphs at all? Have you seen this before? Not, not much. Somebody, a couple of people kind of have maybe, but maybe not. All right, what is our output? So we called find path uh, with, you know, two, a source node and a desk node, and it returns true. So what do we know from our find path algorithm? Like what, what can we do with this? Okay, so we're gonna try, you're working in a team, you're trying to find paths, you're passing them over to the person running the user interface who's supposed to display directions. Okay, so what are you gonna to give to the person who's running the user interface with this, this lovely find path algorithm? What do you think? I'm gonna to go to C07 again. Okay. Okay, so you're fixing the problem. So you're basically saying right now, you're already assuming your partner is trying to write the directions is mad at you. Is that right? Yeah, because yeah, right now this find path algorithm as I've written it, is not going to give you very good travel directions. So it did find a path if one exists, but it all it, all its output is is uh, yes, a path exists or no, a path doesn't exist. Okay, so that might not be the most user friendly travel directions. You ask, how do I get from here to um, I don't know Young in Davisville, and your your algorithm says yes, a path exists. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you know. Good news, there is some possible way you can get there. So start wandering around randomly in the globe and you've got a good chance to someday get there. Okay, so not very good. Uh, so we want to do better. Okay, so this, yeah, this is beyond bad directions. Uh, we're gonna fix this later. So we could fix this, but there are actually other problems with this algorithm too. So this is like a building block. We don't actually want to go too far with this algorithm. So let me show you the other problems. Uh, and we'll not worry about the output one right now. Um, okay, before I show you algorithms, let's just talk about speed. So we've now got an algorithm to do depth first search in a graph. Uh, and as I said, it's close to the ECE 244 breadth first search traversal or a binary search tree traversal, sorry. Uh, but we had to add this visited flag and we had to handle an arbitrary number of edges coming out of any node, not just the left child and the right child. Once we do that, we can walk through any graph we want. Um, we have to worry about speed. So these graphs are big. For the cities we give you, N is you know, more than 100,000 intersections. For Tokyo, it's getting around to a million. Uh, so what's the complexity of it? So let's look at this. Um, okay, so this is the code that you just wrote. Can anybody figure out the complexity of this? And, and don't worry, you can't. Uh, I know the answer. <laughs> so, anybody want to take a shot at the, the complexity of this? I see. I see D thirteen. You look like you guys are ready. What do you think? You want to take a shot at uh, analyzing it? Yeah, I'm gonna turn you on. So, uh, in Right, and that's the right analysis. So, so for these kind of recursive algorithms or graph algorithms, sometimes you know you look at the loops, but sometimes you have to like think about well, how many times am I going to go through the graph? Think a little more holistically. So that's exactly the right answer. It's a, it's a depth first search of graphs actually a pretty fast algorithm. It's order in. Uh, why is it order in? Um, it's because of this visited flag. When we hit a node for the first time we set its visited flag to be true. And every time we hit that node after that, we won't do anything. Okay, we'll quickly look at its visited flag, but we won't look at any of the nodes that it can reach. We won't do any more work. So that means we can only, like we won't recurse. So the number of times that we can call this recursive routine is bounded by order n, okay? Because every time we call this recursive routine, it basically marks another node is visited. So it cannot possibly be called more than uh, n times because it won't be called on anything it already has visited marked. Okay, so now we have to think, okay, well, how much work do we do inside this routine? Well, all this is, is order one. These are just simple statements. 
We do have a loop here, okay? So we have to analyze this loop to see maybe that's more than order one. Um, it does go over every outgoing edge of the node we're looking at. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe it's an order n squared then. So why do you, let me, let me throw it back to you. Why do you think it's order n? You're right, okay? So I'm not questioning your answer, but why are you not worried about this loop? Okay, we're gonna call this routine n times, but we've got a loop here. Maybe we need some other number to capture that loop. What do you think? Let me think about that. Yeah, so the for general graphs, it's basically harder to analyze this loop because you could have a lot of edges. So maybe you can have even a lot of end edges. Um, and, and you'd have to do a bit, bit of a careful analysis to see, well, could this be worse than order n in that case? For a city graph, like what we're doing, uh, the nice thing about it is that the basically the fan out, the number of intersections that we can reach from one intersection is bounded. So on average, it's about four. Any rational city, it's around four. Even if you made a hexagonal city, lots of roundabouts and so on, maybe you get to six, maybe even eight. But there's no way that you can say Tokyo's got a million nodes, therefore I have approximately a million uh, street segments from every single intersection. Like no one knows how to make a city like that, okay? Uh, so this is bounded by a small number, around four on average, which means we can neglect it. That means it just turns into still order one and the whole thing is order n. Okay, so, so total worst case complexity for depth first search, at least in a street graph like this, where our, our fan out is, our number of edges per node is bounded by a small constant is order n. So it's pretty fast. And let me quickly demo this to you. Shrink these down. Okay, I'm gonna try this in the virtual machine first. We'll see if my animations work well. My laptop is slower than the UG machines, so. So any moment now it's gonna finish parsing the OSM data and pop up. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've actually got a few different algorithms I can use for path search, and I've hooked it up to, to the mouse, which is one of the things you have to do for milestone uh, three, is people can click somewhere on the map, and it'll start, you don't have to animate it, but you have to be able to display the final travel path. I'm animating what it's looking at, okay? So let's see, so my path is between Highway 401 collectors and Bristol Road West, and it takes 4,462 minutes, okay? So it's gonna be a really long commute to work, but what is that? That's about, uh, if I divide that by 60, it's somewhere around 55 hours, okay? So I have to leave you know, two to three days in advance. Okay, let me try this again. Okay, so I'm heading, I started out over here. You can see I wandered around over the city, got to Scarborough, okay, wandered back to Tobacco, went up to North York, eventually got there. And this path takes me about 3,800 minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna try one down here near U of T uh, and, and so on. This is actually a good way to visualize your algorithms from Milestone 3. So you can, I'll show you in a future lecture how to write this animation code. It's not very much code. Okay, so I can now see what my algorithm's doing. Uh, okay, so this, let me do one more of these. Okay, so I'm actually trying to go from near the water to near U of T. So actually not that far, 
And you can see my travel path does not look so good. It did find a path, but if you gave somebody directions like this, you know, head out to Scarborough, go to North York, go to Etobicoke, go back to Scarborough, and repeat six times, now go down south, back to UT. Uh, so you'd be late for class a lot. Okay, so let me just exit that and go, go back to the slides. Okay, so the basic problem, well, what is the basic problem? Like, this is not gonna be good. If we, depth first search will find a path, but those didn't look very good, right? So um, we're finding a path, but it's not the shortest path. Our algorithm's not very smart. It's basically randomly wandering around. So I, I wander off to an intersection. Uh, I check, is this where I'm trying to go? So maybe I'm trying to go to Bloor and Young. So I randomly walk in some direction, I get to an intersection, I check, is that where I wanted to go? It's not where I wanted to go, I randomly walk to some other intersection. And I just keep repeating this, randomly walking around until I find my destination intersection or I've explored every single intersection in the city and I finally give up. It's not a very smart algorithm. So what would you do? Somebody gave you a paper map and you could actually look uh, at, at what's around you. Um, or, or even you're just going to go search for how do I get from A to B? Is that what you would do? Would you just walk randomly through intersections? Or would you, do you have some more organized way that you might do it? Where, let's say you've got a paper map. You're actually trying to give a person good travel directions. Would you just randomly move your finger around tracing out paths on the map until you found the intersection or would you do something else? So I'm going to go to B06. Uh, I just turned it on now, so yeah. Yeah, so that makes sense. You said first, right now we're just kind of we're not putting any weights on the edges, and you're right, it'd be better to put weights on the edges, but we have an even bigger problem of the order in which we're searching things is kind of chaotic. And you said an important thing, use breadth first search. What does breadth first search mean? So instead of going on the depth, <laughs> so you see, um, depth Yeah, no, so that makes perfect sense. So depth first search just kind of keeps going, never looks back, right? Um, and breadth first search, breadth first search instead essentially goes outward and kind of rings, okay? So yeah, so this is my example of we're not finding the best path. Even in this simple example I gave you, we found like not the best path. Um, so we want to do better. And yeah, breadth for searches is, is a good way to do it. It's how you would do it on a piece of a map on a piece of paper. If somebody said, I want to get from here to Bloor and Young, and you don't know the city of Toronto, but you have a paper map, you would probably start by putting your finger on where we are right now. So St. George and College, and kind of looking around in circles, kind of looking for Bloor and Young. And when you found Bloor and Young, you would backtrack, how did I get there? Okay, that's more logical because rather than just kind of wandering around with your finger all over the map or with a pen all over the map, and if you finally find it, you just say retrace my steps with the pen. Okay, that's basically what depth first search did. Breadth first search goes out in circles. Okay, so, so yeah, depth first search is just kind of wandering around at random. Okay, so it's just exploring all over the place, and eventually it found you know that path, but it's not very good. So breadth first search instead says, look at everything that is one unit away. So look at all the adjacent uh, intersections. Uh, is any of those my destinations? If none of them are, then look at everything that's two units away. So I've gone through two intersections. 
If none of those are my destinations, let's look at everything three intersections away and so on. I keep doing it. We expand out in these circles and eventually we find our destination uh, and we're gonna do something called backtracing to figure out how did I get here. Okay, so how does breadth first search work? Um, okay, so we're gonna go from source to destination again. It again expands outwards in circles in a graph that's like layers. So our source is zero hops away, it's where we start. Then we look at all the intersections we can get to in one hop. Then we look at all the intersections we can get to in two hops and then all the intersections in three hops. So it's a much more organized kind of search technique. Okay, so we're gonna now call a, a new algorithm called breadth first search path. Uh, and we're gonna ask it again, go from the source to the destination and tell me if it's found or not. Okay, so we're gonna write that function. So this function needs a bit more storage. Okay, so in depth first search, we weren't really storing much. We had that visited flag, um, but we just used recursion to figure out what to do next. We can't do that with breadth first search. Breadth first search, it needs to keep track of what to do next, because from the source, we wanna keep track of what are all the nodes that are one hop away, because that's like our to-do list. And then once we go through all of them, we need to know what are all the nodes that are two hops away, because that's the next thing we do. So breadth first search needs like a to-do list. Uh, and I'm gonna call that to-do list a wavefront. Okay, the wavefront is, it's the line between, it, it's the line of, between known and unknown. Okay, these are all the nodes that have not yet been explored, but they're the next set that we should explore. Okay, so I've got uh, a way, some list of nodes that I should explore next, and it's called, I'm gonna call it Wavefront. And you can build this in a few different ways. I'm gonna make it with a linked list. And it's a linked list right now, I'm gonna use just intersection indices. So it's a list of intersection indices. And it's the next set of things that I want to go to. Okay, so it's initially empty. And to get started, I basically I'm going to push the source node uh, into it. Whoops, this is actually a typo. This should be source ID. So I'm going to fix that right now. So I'm gonna put the source ID into my wavefront. So my wavefront starts out empty and I'm showing it down here. And I push the source ID into it. So now I've got one thing in it. Let's say the source is intersection zero. Um, as long as the wavefront isn't empty, okay? So I've still got some stuff to look at uh, in my search. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the first item, like the item that's at the front of the wavefront. So I'm basically using the wavefront as a queue. I put stuff in it uh, at the back and I take things out of it at the front. So I say, get me uh, the current node, the ID of where I am by taking the front element off the wavefront. Okay, so my wavefront's now empty and my current ID is, is zero, the source. Uh, and in C++, we also have to do this pop front to now Kind of get rid of that. So taking things out of a out of a list in uh, C++, we say dot front to get the value and dot pop to get rid of it. So I do both those things. Okay, I check: Am I at the destination? If I'm at the destination, I just return true. If I'm not at the destination, what should I do? Okay, so this source I've taken it out of my way front. I've checked: Am I at the destination? I'm not. Destination is down here. What do I do next? I shouldn't give up. I should do something else. So any ideas, what should I do? So in depth first search, we recursed, we're not gonna recurse. So what are we gonna do instead? Yeah, so I'm gonna go to C7. And let me just make sure you're on. Go ahead. Is there any building up your way on this that is putting in all the intersection ID that being second? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, so that's what this wavefront is for. We're basically going to take every node that we can reach with one edge, so one street segment, 
and we're gonna put it in our wavefront. And that's what's gonna get us this next level down here. Okay, so we're gonna take, for every outgoing edge of that current node, we're gonna basically find, well, where does it go? What's the two node or two intersection? Uh, and we're gonna take that node and we're gonna put it in our wavefront. We're gonna push it at the back of the wavefront. So after we've gone through this loop, this node zero can reach node one and two with one street segment. So the wavefront has both those things in it. Okay, and our wavefront's not empty. So we still got work to do. So we go back and we go through the loop again. Okay, we'll take something off. We'll take basically the front thing off of the wavefront. So that happens to be node one. Could have been node two, it doesn't really matter because they're both one, one hop away, but it happens to be node one. Take node one out. It's not our destination. So we go through this loop. We say, okay, look at all of the outgoing edges of it. Whoops. Uh, which is just one edge. And we take that node and we put it into our wavefront and we put it at the back. All right. Now we're going to take the next thing out of the wavefront. It's node two. It's not our destination. We look at its outgoing edges. They're three and four. So we put both those in. So notice we've actually got repeated nodes in the wavefront. This can happen. Okay. So node three, we've reached using two different paths. So it's actually in our wavefront twice. So we want to make sure we don't assume that can never happen. Uh, and now we pull off node three, it's at the front of our wavefront. So we're basically going back through this loop. And we, it's not our destination. So we basically take uh, what it can reach, which is node five, and put it in the wavefront. Okay, so node five's in the wavefront. We're going to pull off node four. Can't go anywhere, so there's nothing to do. We pull off node three, and we're just going to put node five in the wavefront again. And now finally we pull off node five and we're done. Okay. If the wavefront ever empties out, it means no path exists. Okay, we have no more work to do and we haven't found the destination, not a path. Okay. All right, does that really, does that make sense to everyone? In some ways, it's actually an easier algorithm to understand the depth of the search. It's uh, recursion sometimes can be a little harder to understand. This algorithm is not too hard usually to understand. But if you have any questions on it, this is a good time to ask. All right, what do I know when I get here? Because we're now still have our bad, our problem of, well, what do we know? The way I've coded it, what, what can I tell the person on my team who's writing the UI path, like drawing out the directions? Okay, so I've done the algorithm, Dr. Coleman's doing the directions. Is he gonna be happy with me? Can he get good directions with this? What do you think? So what do I actually know? At this point, I say my current ID is my destination ID. So I've reached my destination. I know a path exists. Do I know anything else? Do I know how I got here? Yeah, I don't know how I got here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to store some information along the way because yeah, this would again be really bad travel directions. So the general idea because you have to have something called a, a backtrace or a backtracking algorithm. So you're gonna to get to the destination and you have to store some information as you're searching so that when you get there, you can actually figure out how did I get here, okay? And an efficient way to do this is that every node, again, is an intersection, store the edge, uh, which is, can just be the street segment ID that got you there. When you get to the destination, you now can, walk backwards through that sequence of edges to build up the path, okay? So this is an efficient way to do it because every node just knows how did you get to me? It doesn't know the whole path. It just knows uh, you got to this intersection by using St. George Street. And then if I go to St. George Street in college, I will that node will know you got to me by following Beverly, okay? And then that, if I go to that node, it'll say, well, you got to me by following Dundas and so on. And if I, so that's all I need is if every intersection knows what is the street segment that was used to reach me, you can piece back together the path. Okay, and this may be a little subtle. Let's see with an example. Okay, to do this, we actually need to store a little more information. So my wavefront right now was just storing uh, one thing. It was storing the node uh, ID. So I want to keep storing that, 
But I'm actually going to add something else. I'm going to also store the edge ID. Okay, so when I put something in the wavefront, I'm now going to say, all right, on my to-do list is intersection 23. I want to look at it next. But I'm also going to say, and I got to intersection 23 by following edge 58. Okay, those two things are both going into my wavefront. Uh, to make my code a little nicer below, I just made a little constructor here. Okay, that takes two elements and creates, sets things up. I need a special value that indicates there was no previous edge. Uh, I'm the source, okay? I'm the start of the path, do not go any further. So this special value I'm gonna to define to be negative one. Uh, and I shouldn't put negative ones in my code. So this define basically creates a constant called no edge, which is equal to negative one. So it's exactly the same as writing negative one, since it's a lot easier to, re to read. This is what's called the sentinel value, okay? Special value. I know that all my edge IDs, which uh, are going to be street segments, are positive. So there'll never be a negative one value. I'm going to use that as a special value, meaning there is no previous edge. It turns out that's, that's not enough. So on my to-do list, I need to store this. What is the edge I use to reach you? But also in my node data structure, which is basically um, all of the nodes that I've already reached, I've already explored, I'm also gonna store uh, this reaching edge. So I'm gonna store what edge did I use to reach you? Uh, and it's just a street segment ID. And it could also be negative one, okay? So if there is no prior, if you haven't been reached, there was no edge that was used to get to you, then this value will be negative one. Otherwise, it will be the value of the street segment that was used to reach you. Okay, so um, let's see. I think we're over time, so we'll, we'll leave it there. This is, this is the code that will now make that work. So I'll go through that uh, on Wednesday, and we'll finish that off, okay? So where we're going with this is kind of breadth first search with small enhancements turns into a very efficient class of shortest path algorithms. So we're kind of going to gradually build up to some really good shortest path algorithms. Breadth first search is not bad, but it's not the best, but it's coming, okay? Thanks everybody. <clears throat>